The herd might be close. Find what you can. Herd's coming, so you gotta move fast. Looks like people got. Hey, hello out there, folks. It's Dave here from Dave Station VR, and today we're talking about finally the Walking Dead onslaught. This is a game that we've known about for years, and it's gone through kind of a uh, development roller coaster. It started out as a multiplayer game with four players, and now at this point at release, it is a single player campaign, but it's based on the AMC TV series. Uh, so while it's not the first Walking Dead game we've got this year on PSVR, it is, uh, it's got your you know favorite characters, Rick Grimes, Michonne, Daryl Dixon, and Carol. Uh, and also Eugene is floating around in there as well. So, um, there's a lot to dive into here. So let's get into it. Right up front, let's get some details out of the way. This game is going to be releasing for $29.99 in the United States on September 29th. Uh, should be about an hour after this video gets posted. And it's released by Servios, who's a VR developer with actually quite a good track record on PSVR. We've seen games like Raw Data, Creed, Sprint Vector... Uh, that have been consistently very well implemented uh, and fun to play. So um, this is, I would say, probably their first big misstep, um, and we'll we'll get into that later. But just kind of basics here. This game is a, a campaign based around the story of Daryl Dixon that takes place between seasons eight and nine of the AMC TV series. During this time, uh, Daryl goes out on a run and ends up embroiled in this plan to save a girl who's out there trapped somewhere uh, by this group called the Gold 99. So the way this all works is uh, it's told as kind of a backstory by Daryl, who's returned to camp after, you know, uh, being out on this journey, and he tells Rick what happened. Uh, and he's kind of campaigning for them to go out and save this girl. Uh, in between those campaign missions, of which there are seven chapters total, uh, there's a thing called scavenger runs that the game will make you go out and do where it's a little bit more arcadey. Um, when you're playing campaign, there is no time limit. There's no real sense of dread or, or impending doom. But the scavenger runs actually do kind of change it up a little bit because there's this constantly advancing wave of zombies called the the Horde. Um, and it's not, they're not actually zombies. They're represented by this red tide, essentially. And it, it reminds me a lot of um, in Fortnite, you know, when you're outside the circle because you just take damage kind of at a low rate. But what happens is, as you're going through and scavenging in these levels, um, there's this constantly kind of progressing thing behind you, where it's like, okay, there's some fire under my ass. I need to go quickly. I need to loot as fast as possible. I need to get in and get out. And that's actually the, the most uh, suspense or dread or excitement that the game can really muster, because in the campaign sections there is no uh, overwhelming sense of dread. And I'll explain to you why here shortly. A lot of it has to do with the uh, the way that they implemented the weapons and the damage system here, and the physics. Oh my goodness, there's a lot to talk about. Ugh. So I'd say my first big gripe when I started playing this, and I think it'll be a lot of people's first big gripe when they start playing this, is uh, even as early as the tutorial, the game teaches you that if you have a pistol or, a, you know, a, a gun, it takes three headshots to down a walker. But if you have a knife, you can stab them in the face in one hit and they go down immediately. Now, this goes against all, you know, reliable zombie knowledge that everyone has. A headshot is a headshot. You expect, especially later with the better weapons, like if I take an assault rifle and I pump two shots directly into a walker's head, I would think for sure that he's probably going to be dead. That's not always the case. And uh, I think that that's where they really got things wrong here. Um, I have a theory about this, though, which is that somewhere in the development cycle, they realized that, um, you know, the way they had designed it, and maybe it was a little too late to change it at this point because it's already gone through so many shifts, you know. It was multiplayer, now it's not. It's campaign-focused all of a sudden, and they have to fill that out. Uh, and I, I have to assume they had a deadline and not that much time. So what I think happened is they said, well, it's way too easy if we let people have one shot headshot kills, uh, because then you could just stand from a distance and without any danger to yourself, pick off an entire army of walkers. So they said, okay, well, you got to get up in their face and bash them with melee weapons. 
But for the player, that's really unsatisfying. Because, like, if I'm playing a zombie game in VR, and it takes me more than two headshots to kill a zombie, or even explode his head, which doesn't happen often with guns, um, it's just, it feels off. There's something wrong there. And I, I think I understand why they did it, because if I could get one-shot kills, the game would be stupidly easy, even on the hardest difficulty, and there would be no challenge. But even as it stands, there's not much of a challenge. So I, I don't understand the decision here, but that is one of my biggest complaints with the game. Now, unfortunately, that's not my only big complaint with the game. Uh, the thing that really stood out to me was, in all the pre-release footage we've seen of The Walking Dead Onslaught, the thing that they really harped on that seemed like a main design mechanic was that, um, you know, when you interact with zombies with weapons, you can slice off part of their head, and, you know, that part slides off, and you can see the inside of their brain. You can disembowel them. You can do all these kind of, like, minute little uh, dismemberment things beyond just knocking a head off or knocking an arm off. None of that is present in the game at all. Essentially, um, you can bash a head off, you can bash an arm off, occasionally you can shoot off a jaw, but if you knock a zombie's legs out from under him and you dis-leg him? I don't know what the word is for that. If you remove his leg, he dies immediately, which is also very strange. This is another thing where things don't line up with zombie lore. Like, if you cut off a zombie's leg with a battle axe, for instance, I don't believe that he would die or stop crawling after you or be not a threat anymore. But uh, that's how it works. And if you shoot him in the head three times, he might even be alive. So it just it's all over the place in terms of what works and what doesn't work. And none of it really lines up with what you'd expect out of normal zombie stuff. Uh, on top of that, the the mission design is pretty repetitive. You know, at first the supply runs seem like a cool way to change up the pace, but after a while, when you get to the second half of the game, you realize that they're actually reusing areas and elements from the previous supply runs in later ones. And it, it really doesn't change it up enough for that to remain an exciting mechanic throughout the entire game. Um, and I think really those those supply runs just like artificially extend the campaign length. Uh, they said this was a 10 to 15 hour game. I would strongly contest that notion. I think that this is a seven to nine hour game uh, because so for instance, I beat the whole campaign. I unlocked every upgrade for my town. I unlocked every upgrade for every weapon I was interested in and unlocked every weapon that I could get within like eight or nine hours and so i really don't think that it's the 10 to 15 hour game that they said it was and that just kind of plays into my overall feeling about this game which is that in general i don't think that we got what we expected or really what the series deserves um this ends up feeling you know i've heard people call it a cash grab i wouldn't say that uh, I don't think that it's, like, a lazy effort. I think that this just, this just got caught up in development hell. And it went this way and it went that way. And during the process of making this game, I think that they ended up, after having been pulled in so many directions on what this game was going to be, I think that they ended up with a game that doesn't really satisfy anybody, unfortunately. Um, you know, I don't know if this is a situation like Supermassive where it was just, like, bureaucracy killed the cat or what but uh, there's something really lacking in the soul of this game and that's not what I expect typically from Servios so um, I have to say I'm disappointed with the way that this turned out I was excited about it and I really can't recommend it um, I don't do scores but if I had to say anything I would say that for me Servios is usually a reliable like 7.5 to 8.5 out of 10 kind of game company. You know, they don't make the best games on the system, but they make pretty good ones. This, for me, is the first time they're dipping into, like, the 6 territory, where it's really not up to par with what you'd like out of a game with this franchise attached to it. And, uh, you know, 30 bucks for the length of the game isn't terrible for the level of content here, but I think for the level of satisfaction you'll get out of it as a Walking Dead fan or even as just a game player, 
Um, it's it's really kind of rough around the edges and very difficult to recommend uh, at full price. Now, I don't want to make it sound like I never had any enjoyment at all in this game. You know, there were times where, even though I felt up front like, this isn't really up to my standards, I don't really like this that much, after a few hours, I felt compelled to keep going and see the, the story through. You know, see what happened with Daryl and this girl he was trying to rescue and stuff. And that's really the main draw of the game, I think, for Walking Dead fans. But without spoiling too much, I was really, really underwhelmed uh, by the end of the campaign. Because the way it works is like, I told you at the beginning, uh, Daryl is telling you sort of a backstory of where he's been. This is all in the past, right? And he eventually kind of says, hey, you know, Rick, let's go save this girl. And, and Rick says, oh, let's do it, yeah. And then the game ends. So it seems like it's all this precursor to, hey, let's go rescue this girl we've spent the entire game talking about. And unfortunately, the game ends exactly as you would go to rescue her. So it's kind of, um, I hate to say it, but like, like a blue balls situation. Like where you think, you know, you're leading up to this whole thing in the game where let's go save this girl, here's the reason why, and then in the end, the game just says, okay, credits, right before you actually would go do that thing. Uh, and so it feels very underwhelming in the end. So even if you were invested in the campaign as a fan of the series, I think, um, you know, there, there's just something really underwhelming about the game overall, and about the story, and about the way it plays out. Um, so... I'm not saying nobody will get any enjoyment out of this at all. I had fun sometimes. I felt compelled to finish it. I did finish it. I played all the scavenging runs and stuff. Um, it's just, by the end, you might have a sour taste in your mouth. Uh, and I don't know, I, I just can't really say that I recommend this one. This is one of my longest reviews ever, but I, I, like, I could talk about this game for an hour. Um, I have so many thoughts. Uh, but really, I would say most of them come down in the mediocre to negative category, with a few positives. And so, for that reason, I'd say, mm, maybe hold off on this one. If you're really interested in The Walking Dead, you know, get it on sale for 15 bucks, and I, I would say that's okay. Uh, for full price, you might want to pass on this one. Anyways, guys, I have been rambling for far too long about this game. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you as always, and uh, I will catch you next time around. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks.